Young lad. Righteous. Work your bar great. Your craft man so full of technique. Make him feel like so we good and then all right. Show up at them night night cause we are clean Enough of them said them a do it but them not do it like we And them no for what they be about Worry a day or two what they be about Open up it they can make it hear out Anybody not the way them a feel clear out Hey everyone, today I present What If Kratos Was In High School DxD Part 1, please enjoy Awaken What? Where am I? We must awaken. Who is we? Where is this voice coming from? You know who I am. No, I don't. Why I sing this man? His skin whiter than ash, a red tattoo marking alongside his body? And those blades, why do they seem so familiar? You know who I am. No, I whispered. It is time to awaken. Who are you? I screamed. In a less than a second, I was grabbed by the throat staring directly into an amber dye man. I am your past. The weird thing about dreams is that sometimes you don't need to afraid when you wake up from them. My open calmly as I sat back up from tree I was napping from. It took me a second to finally get accustomed to where I finally was. Right I was taking a nap during lunch break. Get back here you pervert. I hear a group of women yell. I look to my left and see three guys running for their lives from a group of girls using kendo sticks as their main weapon. Huh, must have found another hole in girls locker room again. I mumbled. Now, a part of me wanted to let things go as they were but the other just wants to intervene for the hell of it not to mention he was sort of friends with one of them. Decisions, decision. A, let's have some fun. Now we've got you, you perverted bastards. One of the kendo girls growled. Boy, they are pissed. Why the hell do you think it's alright to peek at girls while they change? You don't understand. It is our job, no right as men to view the woman form in her purest state so that we can finally achieve our dream. The dream to become the harem king. I sighed listening to their rant followed by smacks and cries of pain. Idiot. I muttered. Ara ara are you saying that you wouldn't do what they're doing Jay Coon? Behind me, I see my longtime friend and crush Ikeno, her smile always makes me smile no matter what. Well, I'm not a pervert like them. I replied. But you're not denying that you are a pervert. What's her rebuttal? Of course not, all guys are a pervert, hell I am too but even I know that I wouldn't stoop to their level just to see a pair of breasts. I explained. Just then I felt a pair of soft orbs on my back and Ikeno's hot breath behind my ear. True, all you have to do is ask me. As she whispers the last two breath in my ear I nearly lost all inhibition to just grab her and kiss right there. Luckily I was saved by another friend of mine. Akino there you are, Rios has been looking for you. That was so nishtori, as strict as she is she's really not as bad as people make her out to be. All it really takes is one game of chess with her and your good friends with the president of the student council. Well she should know that every lunch break I'm here with Jay Coon. I felt her hug me a bit tighter. Nevertheless we need you to join us at our weekly discussion. It's important. I looked to see Akino pouting as if she was expecting me to want her to stay. Don't worry, I did promise that I'd walk you hope didn't I? She nodded reluctantly. And like how she can make me smile she can even make me feel bad whenever she walks away. But then a stray thought went into my head. Why is it that I always get this strange feeling whenever the Akino or Rios is involved? I've had that feeling from the moment I've met them, I always ignored it because they were my friends and I trust them, but sometimes at night those feelings tend to increase and it causes me to worry both about them and myself. I hope they tell me soon. Akino you can't keep doing this to yourself, you and I both know that it's only a matter of time. Rios said. It wasn't long till Sona told her of her location she called in the race of her peerage. What I do with my friend is none of your concern, Rias. Akino replied coldly. He's my friend too, Akino and you know this. If you would just let me. I am not going to let you make him a part of this world. The raven-haired beauty argued. I know you want to protect him, we all do. 
but sooner or later he's going to be a part of something we both can't control. Then I will protect him, I'm strong enough to do that on my own. Aiken Osan, Jay Kuhn has been our friend for two years now and he still has no idea of the world we live in. We can at least let him know who what we are, Kiba suggested. But what will he think of us? Aikina questioned in both fear and concern. Jane Nichen always knew that something was weird. But he never questioned why he trusts us. I don't want to lose Nichen's trust. Koneka replied softly. And we won't, I promise you. Rias said. We just have to find the right to tell him. Well, we can't do it tonight. Sona's peerage informed me that a stray devil was spotted three kilometers from here. There have reports of people vanishing during after school and dead the next day. Kiba interject. I better let him know to cancel our plans. Akino replied, both lowly and sudden. She was really looking forward to her walk with the young man. Huh, Akino cancelled, another club emergency, hope they're alright. I muttered. It was nearing the end of the day and I was getting ready to leave. Did you two have a lover spat? I look behind me to see Aiko Curry Uu walking up to me. Well, we have to consider lover to have a spat. So no. I replied. What are you doing here isn't your class downstairs. The perverted trio decided to look some old porn mags they hid only for the teacher to catch them and had to escort the three to the principal's office. I shook my head in disbelief at how idiot they can be. What's worse is that Matsuda's excuse was that it was simply meant for a photography club. I would be surprised if the teacher actually fell for that. I replied. So what can I help with my resident pervert? Oh Tilda, are you saying you wouldn't help out an innocent young maiden? She asked. But I playfully look around. Sure have you seen one anywhere? I asked, which earned a cute pout from the girl. Hurtful. She said still pouting. Hey is it my fault that you have this weird power to know the exact size of a guy's snake garden? I replied. Well as the Raven Prince, I would think the job was already implied. I withheld a groan when I heard that nickname. Let me tell you about how this happened. Flashback. It was during my first year in the school and I was walking my way home with Akino and Rias. In that time Rias was seriously into anime and we were having a bit of a discussion on that genre. So you are seriously telling me the Ichigo can take on Naruto at his full power? Ichigo? Of all people? I questioned. Yes, and what's wrong with that? I think that it's a pretty interesting matchup, she argued. Sure, sure like matching up a feather to a hurricane, it's interesting but the outcome is expected. I mumbled loud enough for our great lady to hear. So you think Naruto has a better chance of beating Ichigo? Rias questioned. I don't have to think. I know. Comparing Naruto's track record to Ichigo's Naruto basically has enough power wipe out an entire country while your resident sword user can only do that after he uses all of his power and then for it to be taken away. You fu fu fu, he's got you there Rias. Akino chuckled. Rias returned with a small scowl at her friend before looking back at me. As she was about state her argument we were interrupted. Leave us alone. I hear a young woman yelled. As we passed by a corner we saw two of our schoolmate being harassed by a group of guys that look a bit too old to be in school. Aw oh, come on baby. All we want to do is give you and your friend a good time. One the sleazy looking guy replied. I was already annoyed looking at these guys and just hearing one of them talk was grating. Just leave us alone please. I can see one of the girls was close to tears. Her voice was soft but she too had the same feeling as her friend. Don't worry darling, we don't bite. Much. The other guy said earning a crowded laugh from the group. And it was like that a switch came off. Akinogo warned the police Jay Kuhn but I was already halfway towards the group. Ignoring the Rio yell I walked right in front of the girl with me back turned to them. Hey what the hell do you think you're doing? One of the guys yelled. But really I didn't care. These girls have already said no. I don't know what kind of guidebook you've been reading but I'm pretty sure no still means no, so why don't you leave them alone? I replied. Yeah, well in some cases all they need is a little persuasion. So how about it? 
you leave and act like nothing happened or do my friends and I have to persuade you to let this go? A Pierce man which I'm guessing is the leader walked up to me while his friends were pulling out their own weapons few knives and a long chain as I see them. This doesn't have to end this way. All any of you have to do is walk away and leave. Them. Alone. This time I ordered, but instead of compliance, I get laughed at by the group. And what happens if we don't huh? He shoved me at the huh. I took in a deep breath in and slowly let it out. I've asked you twice, I will not ask you a third time. Oh shut up already. The leader throws the first punch, I could already hear one of the girls scream out of concern for me but really that put looking slow in my eyes. So I casually dodged the punch and threw a quick jab to the leader's chin. He he, what was that a love tap? He laughed but then his laughter died when he found himself on the floor, and his smile was replaced with fear when he found he couldn't stand back up. It's called a brain shake. While the punch may not be a knockout, if you get hit in the chin at just the right angle, it literally shakes the brain to the point you can't move. I explained. But my words were already deaf to his ears. What the hell are you wait for? Get that bastard. He screamed. I shook my head and how stupid these guys are. I ducked under a knife swipe, grabbed the offending arm, shot two punch two ribs and tossed the man aside. I followed up with a straight kick to another man's chest which sends him flying to the floor in pain. The last man was swinging his chain around until he went for a wide swing which allowed me to use my arm at a latch to allow the chain to wrap around my arm and with a simple grab looped it around his neck and smacked him down to the floor effectively knocking him out. I tried to warn them. I muttered. I looked to see the leader trying to crawl his way out only to be stopped by me putting my foot on top of him and grabbing him by the shirt. Now say you're sorry. MSS sorry. He whimpered but I know that wasn't good enough. So I lifted him up and made him face the girl he harassed not too long ago. Say it so all these nice people can hear you. I ordered. I'm sorry. And like that, I dropped him. Well, that guy was annoying. I said wiping the imaginary dust off my hand. In flashback. Not too long after that word got around about how I saved those girls. Like some raven-haired hero, which then earned me a title called the raven-haired prince. Since then I've got girls swooning after me and guy hating on me for no reason. You and I both know what happened back there is nothing compared to this. I replied. So are you saying you don't walk me home? Ika asked me. Honestly. After the day I had and with Akino cancelling I guess a break with Ike would hurt. Sure, let me get ready. I said with a smile, a few minutes later I'm walking Ike home, and I see that the sun was going down and thought came into my head. Hey Ike? Yeah. You ever wonder, that maybe the world has something to hide? I asked. All the time. But really I just ignore it, if it was really important someone would have said something. I hummed. After seeing I go home I began to think to myself. Even though I could can't do that, I can't. Now it doesn't happen often but, ever since I was a kid, I always felt there was some hidden curtain that no other human can see. But when I try to take a peek at it, there's nothing there. Almost as if it was trying to hide from me, what's worse the dreams and feeling tend to increase whenever I was around Akino and my friends. Excuse me, mister. My thoughts were cut off when I felt my sleeve being pulled. I look down at my side and find a little girl no older than six years old gaining my attention. Oh hi there, what you doing out here all alone? I asked. But the little girl started tearing up I thought I hurt her feeling. I lost my mommy I don't where she is. She wailed. Hey, hey it's okay. Look why don't we find your mommy? Do you remember the last time you were with her? She hiccuped in her tears before replying. In the park. I held my hand out and offered her a small smile. Well let go find her. The little girl smiled back and latched onto my hand. It wasn't till we reached for the park and went to work. Alright, where was the last place you were at when you lost her? There. Pointed at the thickness of woods by the park. Not surprising she got lost there. I allowed her to lead me in the woods so she can retrace her steps by as time went on the sun had already set and night has made its appearance. 
I let out a small sigh as we were looking around. Hey kid, I don't think we're going to have any luck finding her here. Let's just find a police officer and see if he can help us. I explained. But something was wrong, I was expecting some whining or a few tears at how fruitless our search has been but instead, she was silent. Hey, mister can I tell you something? She asked, in an instant, her voice made the entire area colder, and there was something in her voice too. She was happy but not in the way where it was a good thing. I couldn't even see her face but it was still enough to keep me on edge. Sure. I replied cautiously. I don't have a mommy. I looked her in shock. I needed someone to come with me. Come with you for what? I questioned. The moonlight glowed on her figure and I could finally see her face. Her smile was demented, cold even. Like something straight out of horror movie. I needed something to eat. Her body began twisting on its own, her arms and legs grew longer, her hands turning into elongated claws, and face what used to be cute little kid changed into something from a nightmare. I could only stare in shock at the sudden change I just saw. What the hell are you? I whispered. I was known as Ygrid, but with you, you can call me as death. She yelled out charging at me in haste and speed. It was only luck that I jumped out the way in time and started to run. But as I ran I could hear the monster cackle. I've always wanted to work for my food. I hope you bring some entertainment before you die. Shit. 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 What the hell is going on? What the hell is that thing? I thought frantically, running past the trees. I needed to but as much distance between me and it so I can find some help. No, I need to calm down. Panicking does nothing but make anything worse. Mister where are you Tilda? I hear it sing out. I quickly hid behind a tree and tried to quiet my breathing. Oh, are we playing hide and seek? Okay, you keep hiding and I'll try and find you. This was all just a game for this thing. Whatever the hell this it is, it knows how to hunt. As I was about to pick up my phone to call, a claw stabbed through the tree I was hiding nearly missing my head. I jumped away in surprise only to be face to face with the creature. Found you Tilda. Changed POV third person. Out of sheer instinct, Jason jumped away and lashed out a strong kick from the claw about to cut. Remarkable the kick was able to send the arm back which shocked Ygrid, using this moment Jason followed up with a straight right and punched the beast in the face. What was shocking was that the punch had enough force to launch Ygrid off the ground sent her flying a few feet away. Yeah it looks like you did. Jason muttered. Ygrid hearing this quickly got up and glared at the teen, the bruise still there on her cheek. What are you? She snarled. I should be asking you the same question. Jason quickly got into a stance. Just what the hell are you? Ha ha ha, oh is the little boy scared don't worry. Jason could see her tense up her arm before dashing at a blinding speed. You won't have to be afraid for long. It was only by mere luck that Jason was able to dodge the worst of it. He tumbled to the ground for distance and see the work he agreed made, but as he got up he felt a something warm spreading down his side. Cautiously he looked down and found a bit of his own flesh tear from the attack, and blood was leaking out from said wound. Shit. Well aren't you lucky, but wait there's more. She screeched. Out of nowhere, a tail appeared from her back and quickly wrapped around the young man's throat. Gah. Jason tried to multitask covering the wound and trying to loosen the tail wrapped around his neck. Now let take you for a ride. Using her tail she quickly made Jason into a human rag doll, bashing him around trees and rocks until she got bored. After she was done, Jason was left dangling by her tail, all bruised and battered, blood dripping from his wound and head. What's wrong got nothing to say. But the young man could only let out a small groan from the trashing. Such a shame. I thought you would put up more of a challenge. Ygrid held up her hand and her claw extended. Oh well. I believe it's time for my meal. As Jason heard this he weakly looked up the beast that's about to kill him. Is this how I'm going to die? Am I supposed to die like this? Time seemed to have slowed down for the young man, as he watches the sharp claw reach his face. Everyone I'm sorry. I'm sorry Rias. Koneko, Kiba. I'm so sorry, Akano. Is this how you want to die? What? He heard a voice ask him. 
But this voice seemed defeated. I can't fight something like this. I'm only human. And that gives you the reason to give up? To fall so short because your enemy was more prepared than you? To do truly accept your fate? No. Then what will you do? I will fight. What? I will fight. Fight what? I will fight to survive. I will fight this monster. I will fight. I will fight. I will fight to return to her. Then do it. Time resumed once more and as the claw was about to reach its mark, it was stopped right on its tracks, by Jason's hand no less. Yigrid tried to pull away but Jason's grip was much harder to pull than she had thought. I will not die here. She heard him whispered. The young man glared at the monster where she finally got a look at his eyes, glowing hot amber almost as as they were on fire staring right at her soul. Without her no Jason swung his body upward and planted both feet to Yigrid's body, the impact it caused the monster to release her hold and send her back a few feet away. I will fight to survive. What is going on? You should have bled to death by now. That is when she got a look the young man wound, slowly but surely they were closing up. All the wounds Jason had that day was healing. But it seems like the boy had no idea about it. Now tell me who in the hell are you? I am a man, with no fate. Jason said. His hands start to glow. I am a man that defies his own destiny. The spread past his wrist. I am a man that will fight the very gods himself to reach his goal. The glow stops at his forearms and intensify. I am the man that shows no mercy to my enemies. His started to change and the glow began to make a shape. I am a Spartan. He roared and in his cry, the glow shines to a blinding light. As the lights died down in the teen hands were two short blades connected blade a chain wrapped around the teen's arm. With an angered cry Ygrid dashed towards the young man hoping to end it all here only for her claws to be blocked. What? That won't work on me again. Jason parries the strike and counters with a large swing of his blade. The blade was able to cut deep into the monster's body which earned a loud screech from Ygrid. She jumps but to cater the wound only to find it burning her with each passing second. Why? Why is this burning me? She yelled. That is when she finally got a look at Jason's weapon. Along the cracks, they were glowing red as steam began expelling out of the blade. His blades it's like they're on fire? But Jason did not care what she had to say. With a grunt, he threw both blades at Ygrid where they both stabbed and landing on her body. The distance of the chain shocked her so much that she didn't see the chains retract and the user speeding right towards her. Both feet planted right on her face, Ygrid fell on the floor in pain, with stab marks and blood on her body and both of her arms trapped by Jason's feet she was unable to move. Yigrid saw the look in his eyes, he was ready to finish this. W wait. Please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You wouldn't kill a little girl would you? Yigrid reverted back to her childish form the stab with wounds still present. Only for the teen to give her a cold look. He can remember the cold smile she gave him. The wounds and the sadistic play she commenced. This, this was no little girl. No mercy. He raised his weapon high aiming for her head and plunged them deep into her eyes. Ignoring her screech he twisted the blades hard until Ygrid's scream came to stop and her arms went limp. Panting heavily he ripped the blades out of her head and stepped back only to find something wrong as he did. That's it, now please comment for a part 2.